Marhaba and welcome to another Mark Ashman video. Today in the Air of Fact series, it's time for Tunisia. Let me just give a shout out to our awesome sponsor, Wondershare Uni Converter. Been using it for a while now, and my favorite features are the screen recording and video converter. Very professional quality. If you guys are looking to convert high quality videos and audio files, this is the best app for it. It converts full HD and 4K resolution. Any video and audio format with up to 30 times faster conversion speed. You can download online videos, burn or rip old CDs and DVDs, and the screen recorder function is high resolution too. It's great if you want to record streaming videos and even take screenshots. All perfect for recording gaming videos with real-time voice over. The app also has some really solid editing functions. Aside from that, there's also the option to make GIFs and VR video conversions. Very professional and easy to use. They also have really great customer service, by the way. So go check it out, guys. I put the links below. Wondershare Uni Converter. You get a free trial and then 40% off the full version. Some good stuff. All right, now. Tunis. Yalla. Officially, the Republic of Tunis, or Al Jamhuriya to Tunisia, is a country in the Maghreb region of North Africa with a population of more than 11 million people. The official language is Standard Arabic, with Tunisian Arabic being widely spoken, along with Amazigh and French, sometimes all blended in talk. Now, the dominant religion is Islam, with a small minority of Christianity and Judaism, and the majority of ethnic groups are Arab Amazigh. Now, the climate of Tunisia is Mediterranean in the north and semi-arid in the south. So you got beaches, mountains, plains, and desert of the Sahara. Sahara al-Kubra in Arabic. Basically, the Great Desert. Now, the capital and largest city is Tunis, with a population of over 2 million people in the metropolitan area. There you'll find the World Heritage Site of the Medina of Tunis, with hundreds of monuments like palaces, mosques dating back to the 12th century. La Goulette is located right there. Halak el Wadi, which is the port of Tunis, with the Fort de la Goulette, a historic fort built in 1535 by Charles I of Spain, later captured by the Ottomans in 1574. There's also the El Zaytuna Mosque there, Jem al Zaytuna, the oldest in the capital, and where one of the greatest universities in the history of Islam is found. The Avenue Habib Bourguiba is the capital's political and economic core of the whole country, named after the first president of the Republic. In fact, it's often compared to the Champs-Élysées in Paris. And you'll find the Cathedral of St. Vincent of Paul here, besides which is the statue of Ibn Khaldun, along with the Théâtre Municipal de Tunis, first built in 1902. But wait! Who is Ibn Khaldun, you ask? Ah. Born in Tunis in 1332, Ibn Khaldun was an Arab scholar of Islam, social scientist, and historian, considered the father of modern historiography, sociology, economics, and demography. You welcome humanity. His most famous work, by the way, is called Al Muqaddimah, kind of a world history book. There's also a few great towns there, like Carthage, which is named after the historical and legendary Carthage, which I'll get into soon. There you can see the remains of the ancient empire, while today you can attend the International Festival of Carthage. Now Marsa, which is a popular vacation spot, and it looks just beautiful. Look at that. Now several kilometers from Tunis is also the town of Sidi Bou Said, named after the religious figure Wali Abu Sa'id al Baji. And the town stands out with its white and blue look at the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. All right, now we go to some history. Carthage, or Karta Hadasht in Phoenician, meaning new city, about 3,000 years ago. Now, according to ancient and Roman Greek texts, Carthage was founded by Queen Dido, or Queen Elisha, also known as Alisar or Elisa daughter of the king Belus of Tyre, or Sur in modern-day Lebanon. It grew into a full, independent thalassocracy or maritime empire, establishing trade with neighbors and exploring beyond the Mediterranean Sea, reaching the Atlantic coast around the Iberian Peninsula. Now, the Greeks were notable rivals and competitors for trade and land, which led to several wars between them including wars in Greek-controlled Sicily in 480 BC, with each side winning and losing through several centuries, until the Romans entered the chat. Now you see, Carthage was a dominant force in the Mediterranean, with a solid naval fleet, but 
mostly mercenaries on the ground, while Rome had an excellent and disciplined military force. Combine that with territorial dispute, competition and commercial interest, and you get more war. Wonderful. It's like business, but with more blood. So what do you get? You get the three Punic Wars between 264 and 146 BC. They were known, by the way, to be huge wars for the time and very costly to both sides. And the second Punic War is most famous for Hannibal, considered one of the greatest military commanders in history. Now, Hannibal led a successful military campaign crossing the Alps with war elephants, invading Italy and destroying the Roman army, winning several battles, but falling short of winning the whole war, which was a close call for Rome. Finally, in the Third Punic War, Carthage was destroyed and burned, with people sold into slavery. And whatever was left of Carthage was converted into a Roman province in Africa. And so it went through a rebuilding phase a couple centuries later, and then Christianity began to spread to the region. So you can see evidence of that with structures like the Roman amphitheater in a gym built during the third century. It's also in Roman Carthage that St. Augustine, bishop, theologian, and philosopher received higher education and later taught rhetoric. Between 430 and 533 AD, a part of Tunisia was ruled by the Vandals, while the Western Roman Empire was going downhill. It was a Germanic tribe who invaded the region, but then were kicked out by the Byzantine Empire in 533-534. Until, of course, Arabs arrived with the Muslim conquests, taking over the region and founding the city of Kairouan, which is today a World Heritage Site, where the Great Mosque of Uqba is located, along with the Mosque of the Three Gates and the Mausoleum of Sidi Saheb. Tunisia went through several caliphates and dynasties, even being conquered by the Normans of Sicily before going back to the Almohads al Muwahidun, before the conquest, of course, of the Ottoman Empire which was itself followed by the French invasion of Tunisia in 1881, lasting until 1956, when Tunisia achieved independence, with Habib Bourguiba as the prime minister and then president. Now, he was followed by Zin al-Abidin bin Ali, who took over in 1987 until 2011, when the Tunisian protest began, evolving into the Tunisian revolution and inspiring the Arab Spring. No one forgets the Arab Spring. Okay, on to some notable cities and towns I didn't mention. Sfax or Sfaqis in Arabic or Sifax in Amazigh, a major port town often referred to as the second city of Tunisia, built on the site of old Roman ruins, which has today become an important commercial and industrial center. Sus, the Pearl of the Sahel, where you'll find the Medina of Sus, the Great Mosque of Sus, the Museum of Dar al an art museum which belonged to an aristocratic family, as well as the Mosaic Museum. Tozer, the oasis where the Raiders of the Lost Ark, aka Indiana Jones, was filmed, along with the city of Kairouan. Now, in Tozer, specifically in El Shabika Oasis, is where lots of scenes from Star Wars Episode 4 were filmed. Why? Because the force is strong with Tunisia. Precisely. Hammamet, the one small fishing village, now the main tourist resort of Tunisia, with its beautiful beaches and charming alleyways, as well as the Medina and 12th century Qasbah. Matmata, which is a small Amazigh speaking town with cave dwellings also used in Star Wars. Now, the town is located in Gebis, which is famous for its souks and beautiful beaches, the mountain, the oasis, and desert all in one place. Okay, now for some notable sites. Qasr Awlad Sultan. That is a fortified granary located in the Tatawin district in southern Tunisia. It's spread out over two courtyards and also featured in the film Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. That was done in some of the scenes used to represent the slave quarters of Mos Espa, where the character Anakin Skywalker lived as a boy. Shot the Jerid, the largest salt lake in Tunisia, which takes various colors. It's also there that the Star Wars world of Tatooine was filmed, named after the Tunisian city. Star Wars fans, so Talmenza, the largest mountain oasis in the country, where there's also an abandoned old town. Cap Bon, Ra's Tayyib, a beautiful peninsula often called the Garden of Tunisia, popular for its sunny beaches 
and clear blue sea, as well as thermal springs. You can find Phoenician ruins near the area in the town of Kerkawen, which is a world heritage site. The Monastir Ribat, originally a military structure, today considered a holy site because it maintains two mosques for the city of Monastir. Lake Ishkel in North Tunisia, it's also a world heritage site with its intricate wetlands attracting thousands of migrant birds each year, including flamingos. Bouhidma National Park, listed by UNESCO and famous for containing rare creatures like the Attucks antelope. There's also Roman structures well preserved within the park. All right, let's go to some culture. Art is strong in Tunisia, and there are currently about 50 art galleries hosting all kinds of exhibitions by international Tunisian artists, including the House of Live Arts, the Galerie Yahya, and so many more. In music, Tunisia shows a distinct style born of a mixed history. Take Ma'lou, for example, a genre of music with similarities to Andalusian classical music because it was historically introduced through Andalusian refugees centuries ago. From what I've heard, it sounds like a distinct Arabic and Amazigh style of music with some Andalusian elements. And it's usually played by small orchestras of violins, drums, guitar, oud, and flutes. The Rashidiya Institute, which is a well-known group formed in 1934 to preserve and promote national heritage. Anwar Brehim a Tunisian oud player and composer, acclaimed as an innovator in this field, whose style fuses Arabic classical music, folk music, and jazz. There's also a specific kind of instrument called the mizuid, which is a type of bagpipes played in Tunisia and east of Algeria. Now, among the best known Tunisian musicians, singers, and composers are Khemais Tarnan, who was one of the founders of the Rashidiya. <laughs> Raoul Jurnu, a Jewish Tunisian singer and composer, was known to perform for Jewish events. The charismatic Saliha, whose deep voice earned and made her a Tunisian star. And Hadi Jouini, who composed over a thousand songs and whose style was inspired by Andalusian music. In cinema, you have the Carthage International Film Festival, created in 1962, and the Pan-African Federation of Filmmakers, focused on promoting the African film industry. Tunisian cinema, even if it's young, is rich and diverse in style and theme, from action to political to drama, with films like The Silences of the Palace having won international acclaim. And now, for some food. Leblebi, which is a dish of chickpeas and a thin garlic and cumin flavored broth served over small pieces of stale crusty bread. Raw or soft cooked eggs are always nearly added to the hot soup mix, which ends up making it cook. And you also add to that olive oil, harissa, which by the way is itself made with hot chili pepper paste with spices. Couscous, of course, which is important in Tunisia as much as in its North African neighbors, with its delicious toppings of meat and vegetables. Usually lamb for Tunisians. Brik, based on a pastry shell filled with delicious options like eggs, parsley, tuna, and cheese. Salad Meshwiya, made with tomatoes and peppers. Khubiz Tabuna, a type of bread cooked in a tabuna pot or oven made from cooked earth with stones at the bottom to keep the heat. Babaluni for dessert, round shaped donuts similar to your typical American donuts made with flour dough that's fried in oil and soaked in honey or sprinkled with sugar. And there you go, amazing Tunisia. If you guys want to support me, see the extended version and more special content, check out my Patreon page in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Vero. Let me know what you thought was most interesting. Don't forget to like and share the beauty of Tunisia and subscribe for more education, culture, and entertainment. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.